Hey guys, it's me, Croft Studios, and I'm here with a very big Star Wars set review. And I'm here with Jabba's Palace, set 9516, ages 9 to 14, 717 pieces, and it retails for $119.99. And it comes with 10 figures overall, so let's go on to our box really quick. Here's a quick look at the front of your box, and there is the back of your box. Here you get one instruction booklet right here, as you can see. You get two actually. This is the first one right here. And here is your second instruction booklet. Uh, not too much about them. There's nothing really too much on the inside except for the screaming kit on the back as usual. And you also do get this cardboard box thing where you get your instructions inside of. So let's take a look at the minifigures. And since this is my 100th video special, I'm going to start doing a new thing for my just reviews not anything else so this is called find the bunny I've seen lots of people do find Yoda but I decided to do find the bunny and you have to I'm gonna put him in random reviews he will be in this one so look around for him and if you find him you will get one free subscriber every single time even if you like get it in another video you will get another one so the first person who comments below where he is in the review and uh I will reply to you and tell you that you're going to get your subscriber. So he will be somewhere randomly in my reviews. Remember, not ju not hauls or anything else, just reviews of sets. Here we got Chewbacca right here. Uh, he's not a bad minifigure. There is nothing different about him from the 2011 or all the other versions. He's got slight back printing. And nothing different about him. There's not much to say about him, so let's move on to our next minifigure. Up next, we got Bib Fortuna. And he's got a really cool head mold, as you can see there. He's got a really creepy face. Uh, he's got a little bit of printing on his blue torso right there. He's got a black cape right there. There is no back printing on him. You can see that really cool looking tentacle going around. Um, his head mold is really nice. I like it. Okay. Up next we got the Gomorian Guard and he is a fantastic minifigure. He got a little bit of leg printing down there. Let me move him up a little bit. You can see the leg printing. He's got a great head mold and torso. He's got this armor that goes over his arms with a pretty big axe. He is a amazing minifigure. He's got a little bit of back head printing, back torso printing. He does not have any printing under his big headpiece. He's got a weird green arms and weird green face and stuff. He's got the very nice pig nose right there. So he is a very nice minifigure. So let's move on to our next minifigure. Okay, up next we got Dola. She's like the dancer girl. And uh, she looks really nice, actually. Not bad. She's got some nice torso printing, some leg printing. She's got a happy face right there with a really cool head mold. But there's a problem with the head mold. You can see the scared face. If you bend this up a little bit, you can see the scared mouth on the very bottom. That's what's wrong with this figure. I will show you the back face really quick. Okay, we got Dola's scared face on the back, as you can see. I really do like this minifigure, but the mold is really bad. Like with the scared face on the back, you can see the happy face too. Up next we got Boosh or Princess Leia in disguise. And she is in, I can't even tell how awesome this figure is. She's got amazing torso printing, amazing leg printing, amazing thermal detonator in her right hand or left hand from the other angle. She's got a nice staff right there. Her head mold is just awesome. I love it. Uh, I will show you the top head printing after this. She's got a little jetpack or backpack right there, as you can see. So I will show you her actual face and her hair really quick and take off the jetpack. Here's Princess Leia um, with her bounty hunter suit on, except she does not have her hat on. She has an angry face right there and a uh, sort of smiling face on the back for when she gets Han out of the carbonite. You can see the back printing. And she also does include a hair piece. You can see that right there. It's a nice hair piece, actually. Move this a little bit. Uh, good for Princess Leia, actually. So 
Yeah, that's basically it for Princess Leia, so let's move on to our next figure. Okay, up next we have Salicious B. Crumb, I guess. That's his name. Uh, he has, he's like rubbery plastic. He can move his tail, as you can see, move it around. Uh, let's see, his headpiece does that. He's very ugly. Uh, he's got a hole down there for when he sits down on a stud. I wish he had, like, legs that could sit on a stud, but, uh, it's fine, I guess. Okay, up next we have Jabba the Hutt, of course. He's got a very weird-looking tail right there. He has movability like this. You can see the little pieces on there. They look kind of nice, actually, the little lumps and stuff. But, uh, he's got two holes back here for some random reason. I guess they're, like, ears. You could say that. He's got arms. They could actually fit into minifigure arms, which would look really weird. He's got his tattoo there. You can see his big mouth and his eyes, his nose. Uh, his other arm doesn't have anything on it. You can just each hatch it like that. It's held in there by a blue piece. Put that back in. So, he is a very nice fat figure. So, let's move on to Han and the B-16 spider droid. Okay, up next we got Han Solo. And we're back to the spinner now after showing Jabba. Uh, Han Solo right here, he's got his shut eyes right there. He has a pretty nice torso, just regular brown legs. He's not different at all from the um, Han Solo from the Slave 1, except this face. He does have a double-sided face. Let me take off his hat. When we go back there, he's got a smiling face, or not smiling face, actually a grumpy face right there. So... Yeah, let's move on to his Carbonite. Up next, we got Han Solo's Carbonite, and it's not different at all from the Slave 1 Carbonite. Uh, he's got the side printing there. You can fit Han Solo inside of there, of course, which is a very nice playability feature. Uh, there's a lot of printing and stuff on there. On the sides, there's like the weird printings over there. They're pretty nice looking, actually. So. Yeah, let's move on to the B-16 spider droid. Okay, up next we got the spider droid right here. Uh, he's got, like, swords for legs, which is kind of weird. Uh, not too much to say about him, actually. He's made out of actual Lego pieces. He's got a nice bottom piece there, as you can see. Now I'm going to show you the exterior view of this set. As you can see on the front, there's just a bunch of tan, dark tan pieces. It looks very nice. It looks sort of jumbled up, like Jabba's Palace in the movie. It looks really nice. You can see the little orange translucent stud on the top of the roof. The slanted pieces there look really nice. It looks sort of jumbled up, and it um, sort of matches the movie description too. And to the tower now, the door as you can see, it's way smaller than the movie one. I'm very mad about that. I think they should have made the tower like, I'd say like four times bigger to make this set worth the price. They should have made the tower four times bigger so they could make the door accurate size and the tower accurate size. You got some gun turrets right there and some nice holes in the wall. Those look really sweet. On the top of the tower, it looks really, really nice how they made the pieces turn like a circular direction on the front. It looks really nice. And there is a little black piece right there. It's like a long pole piece. You'll see what that does in a minute once I show the tower. So let's move on to our first playability feature. Okay, so here is what you can do basically. You unhook this right like this. You got three pieces that hook it in. And it looks really nice. You can have it like this. And it looks like slanted and it looks kind of cool. So I'm going to show you just the tower and move this out of the way. Okay, on the front, you got a nice playability feature. All you do is pull this up. Looks really nice. And the part that also makes it really nice, there's a piece back here, a black pole piece. And once you pull this up, you push this down like this, and it holds it up. So you don't have to hold it up while the figures walk in. So that's a pretty nice playability feature. So let's move on to the little gun turret. Okay, the gun turret moves around like this, and it's got this little movement right here so it can shoot people. And 
It's a pretty nice gun turret actually, maybe a small defense system for Jabba's palace. Right here is the droid that talks to C-3PO and R2-D2, even though they don't come in this set. But um, this basically pops out from the inside. I'll show you that once I go to the inside, just pop it out. The detail on this little piece right here looks pretty nice. You can twist it around from the inside. Looks pretty nice. So let's move on to our next playability feature. This is the back view of the tower. Right here is a cool playability feature where you can just lift this up detaches very easily. You can put it back down. And this is sort of the inside of Jabba's palace. So I'm gonna show the top part of it first, just detach it from that and then show the top. This is the top part of the tower and basically you can put the Gamorrean guard inside of here. He can watch and make sure no one comes. You got a blaster and a pair of binoculars up there. Those are included. And on the bottom part down here, you got a gun with a crate and a random bottle. The Gomorian guard must be drinking something. This part's just plain, looks pretty nice, but it gets a little dirty. There's a little bit of dirt on it. I had to clean it off actually, so that's a little weird. I don't know if that'll happen with you guys, but we'll have to see if you get the set. So let's move on to the bottom part of the tower. Okay, this is the bottom part right here. On the side, I forgot to show you this, you got a little hole and some windows. That's pretty nice looking actually. And back over here, you got some orange translucent light pieces. And uh, the you can see the yellow piece down there. You actually have the, that's the piece that you press to activate the droid on the front. And on the bottom, you got some flat pieces, which are a little random because you can't set the minifigure there when you're trying to walk them in. They just slip and fall. That's a little weird. So that's basically it for this tower. Let's move on to the main attraction. Right here, you got the main attraction for Jabba's palace, which is Jabba's seat and resting area, basically. And for the roof up here, you got some brown pieces, really, really big pieces up here. You can just take it off like that. And even if you don't put it on right, it just slides in. It's a really good design how they did that, like just slides back in. And of course, in all Star Wars sets, they gotta have a dumb flick missile. And I'll show you that once I'm done showing you the bottom. You got a random gray piece down here. And these pieces are the ones that make it slide in. So let's move on to the flick missile. This is the flick missile feature right here. You press this red piece in the back, fires out. For another quick front view, you got this random piece right here. It's not actually too random because it shows a really, really fun playability feature. And this has a really, really fun playability feature right here for younger kids. Just open this up, completely opens up, which is a really, really good playability thing. You can just open it up like that. Inside Jabba's palace on the wall, you got a hearth, which is Jabba's cooking stand. And you got a little pan right there where you can cook his little froggies. And they must taste pretty gross uh, because it's right behind Jabba and yeah. This is under Jabba's seat randomly. You get a dead frog three coins that are golden and the new flat pieces for 2012 and you get a small pistol. I guess it's some pretty nice cool little accessories that you get with the set. I really like all the little random things that they included with this. This is probably one of the more main features of the set. It's not a bad feature, it's not too fun, but all you do is press this in and Jabba's seat completely moves up. It is a little bad though that this piece just sticks out randomly. When people are walking into the palace, they, they can press that in and Jabba might fly forward without knowing it. So they have to go all the way outside, push it in, move Jabba up. But I guess Lego has to do that kind of thing and not hide it. But they do have another playability feature that is hidden and better. So we're gonna move on inside Jabba's palace and show you all the fun things inside of there. This is Jabba's seat. You got some studs on the front. You got the studs for where Jabba sits. On the bottom, you got dumb random red piece. And you can sit Jabba the Hutt on here very easily. Sit him right here. And 
You can fit bib on those two studs right there on the dark gray piece in front of Jabba, or you can stick them behind if you want to. That's a pretty nice thing, so let's move on to the inside of Jabba's Palace. This is another playability feature. This is probably the main feature, actually. Out here, you got this little piece. You, all you do is pull it out. She falls into the pit for Rancor to be eat her. And just saying, next year, they're coming out with a Rancor pit set that you can actually hook on the bottom of this. You see these random pieces down here? You can actually hook the Sarlacc pit there, or the Rancor pit. You can just hook it right on there, and it's a fun playability feature. After this little feature right here, I'm going to take the actual carbonate off so I can show you more detail. You can just spin this around. So you can do the feature where Leia gets him out, just spins around. You can detach it very easily. And you can see how that spins right there. Over here by the crate, you get an extra piece of handcuffs. Chewie does come with the handcuffs, and this is a little extra one. Take that out of there. On the table right here, you got these random little yellow puffy pieces. I don't know if it's a food of some sort, but it looks pretty cool. You got the golden cup right there. You got the really cool looking floor right there where the people look inside to the pit. And on the table to the right, you got uh, another golden cup. I'm going to actually take these tables off so I can show you more detail inside of the palace. Right here, you got Jabba's little froggy bowl down there, another one. And you got his hookah, which he smokes right there. And I will show you that in his hand. And this is supposed to fit inside Jabba's hand, but it's being really stupid, and the piece does not even fit in his hand. It just pops out. I keep doing this over and over, but this will not stay inside Jabba's hand. Right here, you just, you're just supposed to hook that in, and it just pops out. It's a really bad design, but the piece there obviously does not work, but on the box, it shows that you can fit it in his hand. I don't know if it's just my piece or there's something wrong. Sometimes it does stay in the hand, as you can see now, but if I move it just a little bit, it will pop out. You have to get it just right in the hand, otherwise it will not work. This right here is a really cool control pad for when Leia pushes the buttons to get him out for Han. It's a really, really cool thing. It comes in a lot of sets, like the 2006 sets, the old ones for Star Wars, a lot of old sets. It's not a new piece, but it looks really nice, even if it's not a new piece. This is a very quick look at the side, where you can hook in the actual tower. So we're gonna move on to our ratings and why you should buy this set. Okay, before I give my rating for the set, I have a guest star today with me, Legoly329, and he's gonna give a quick little version of his rating, really quick, and then we'll go on to my ratings. Hey guys, it's me, Legoly329, on Crop Studios channel, and he asked me to give my quick opinion on the Jabba's Palace set. Personally, I adore, I love this set. Besides the price, the price is terrible, it sucks, but this, the, the set itself is amazing. Recreates one of my favorite scenes from one of my favorite movies ever made. You get 10 brilliantly made minifigures, and it's just overall an awesome set. I highly recommend you get it, um, unless you don't like the price. I don't like the price, but the set, the set itself is a 10 out of 10. Including the price, maybe a 9, but really a terrific set. Okay. Now onto the final rating of the Jabba's Palace set. And I would just like to say really fast before I give the ratings, this is a pretty tough set to decide on because of all the playability and the price for it. And thank you everybody for helping me reach so many subscribers, my 100th video. I'm almost at 150 subscribers already, which is really awesome. Thanks for all the support and help everybody. So for the ratings, if you don't really know Star Wars that much and you care about the price, this is going to get a 5.5. If you are a Star Wars fan and care about the price, this is going to get a 7.5. If you're a true Star Wars fan, though, like me, and you do not care about the price one bit at all, this is getting a 10 out of 10.
because I I really don't care about the price. I just really wanted the set early review. Really awesome job of the hut. I think it's just amazing, and I'm for my personal rating, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. This is the only review that I've ever gonna given a 10 on, or maybe. Or, there could have been some other ones that I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure this is the only one with a 10. And that is basically it for this review. Look for more LEGO reviews, rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel.